Hello, and welcome to another episode of ES Repair. I am your host, Mr. Fix-It. In this video, I'm going to show you how you could change a 3.5 inch hard drive, both SATAs and uh, IDEs, into an external drive kit. Now, if you've seen the previous video that I've shown, transferring files from an old hard drive, you probably remember this. This is the uh, temporary adapter that I used to connect to an old hard drive to transfer files, which was pretty simple. All you had to do was plug it into the correct slot, like that, Plug in your power cord for the drive, depending on which one you got. And there you go. That's about as temporary as it goes. Well, this idea is mainly for if you don't wish to keep this hard drive. But what if you do? Well, I'm going to show you how you can make it more permanent. So, we can unhook all this, and I'm going to show you how you can change it into one of these. It's an external hard drive kit. Most electronic stores or computer stores do carry these, and they're very, very simple to do, and I'm going to show you how. What you need is a hard drive. You can do IDEs, 3.5 inch. You can do SATA drives, 3.5 inch. You can also do 2.5 inch drives too as well. Plus, if you would like to do your old CD or DVD drives and then close them into one of these, you can also buy the kits for those too. Typically, each kit contains the enclosure, software, and most times drivers, a set of screws, you need a screwdriver that comes with it, the data cable, and the power cable. These are everything that comes in one of these kits. Now when you get these kits, make sure you get the right one because there are differences. Some of these kits will call, are called IDE or PATAs, P-A-T-A's. Or you can use SATAs. Now you want to make sure you read the package to make sure that you're getting the correct one. As you've seen in my installing hard drives, I show you how you can distinguish between the differences between the IDEs and the SATAs. Well, once you make sure that your kit is all here, what we need to do first is take the enclosure apart. The disk, which is this, contains backup software. In front of this, as you can see, there's a button right here that is called backup. This is one of those one-touch backups that you can use your old hard drive for. You got your power light, your activity light, a power switch, one-touch backup, your USB-B connector, and your power adapter. As you can see, there are two screws. You got one here, and you got one here. What we want to do is take these screws out.
and set them to the side. And remember, these screws go to this top here. Now, you simply slide the thing out. And inside, you have the railing. You got the holes in the side. This is what's going to mount the hard drive to the to the body here. This one is particularly for the PETAs or IDE drives. Because you got the 40 pin connector here and you got the power adapter. This is what the inside of it looks like. So what you need to do next is take your hard drive Connect your IDE cable you want to make sure you use the correct polarities you don't want to damage your drive then you want to take your power connector here and connect it to your drive and you want to make sure that you get these indentations in the proper position otherwise it won't fit and don't force it on there you may have to use a little wiggle right there to get them to slide on there because these contacts are pretty tight to make ensure that you get the proper securement now as you can see here I've got them connected. You got the IDE connected here and you got the power connector here. Now as for the jumper, if you remember seeing one of my other videos been installing these, the jumper is not necessary. You don't have to worry about setting it for these. Now once the drive is connected, next you want to mount it. Now how these work, you may need to bend the cable a little bit, it gives you room. And you want to make your holes to your drive line up good, just like that. Then you take these screws that were in with the kit and slightly just put them in the hole. And use your screwdriver that came with the kit. Now you want to be careful that you don't cross thread these. Just like that. And you do the same thing for the next hole. Got that side. Line your holes up again. Being sure that when you put these screws in here to tighten them down, don't cross thread them. There's being stubborn. There we go. Let's get this one in here. Don't force them in there. You may have to adjust it to get the holes to line up right. There we go. A lot of times you can just turn it to the right or to the left and then you feel a little click and then turn it right back to the left. Just like that. That's a good way to make sure that your threads are lined up properly. And there you go. Now, 
the hard drive is mounted to the railing. You've got your IDE cable secured. Make sure it's secured in there. Make sure your power plug is secure. You got your cable here. And you got a little bin here, which is fine. They're allowed to for adjustments. You don't have to worry about the jumper. And now we're ready to put it back together. Now we put get our case back. Then you gently insert the drive as such. Just like that. Just gently slide it in. Don't want to bend the wires too sharp. And there you go. Now we need to put cover screws back. <clears throat> now we need to put cover back screw in. Now when you're putting these drives in here, make sure you do not touch anything on the circuit boards. Static electricity will damage these things beyond repair. So when you want to do these, be sure you're completely grounded and touch a metal object or something to get you discharged. And whatever you do, don't touch anything on any of the boards, whether it's the hard drive or the circuitry for this USB connect uh, chip. Well, there you go. Now you got the hard drive together and ready for use. Now once we have our drive together, now we're ready to plug it into the computer. First you need to take your power adapter, plug it into the wall, and then plug it into the power adapter plug. Just like that. You want to make sure that your switch is turned off first. Next, we need to plug in the data cable. Now that the data cable is plugged in, now we're ready to get this thing plugged into the computer. Turn the power on. As you see, the power light has come on. You will hear the drive spin up and set. Now the drive is ready. It's powered and ready to go. Next thing, all you have to do is plug it into a computer. You'll see the light come on. It means that the computer's working. It's also now saying that it's installing the drivers. And you also see activity going on the hard drive. Well, now the device is ready to go. So, once that's all set up, the light will flash if, if to indicate that something is going on. Now, to access it, you do like you would any other drive. You can click start, go to computer. And then as you look here, you will notice that another drive is listed. See on this one here, I have my two main drives, then my backup drive, 
And now what you're looking at here is my external drive. Now you can double click it. And now I can see everything that's on the drive. And access it just as if it was built in or it was an external USB hard drive. Well, once you get your computer connected to your USB your new USB drive and able to access the drive, now if you choose, you can use the disk that came with the kit to install backup software. This software will allow you to back up any kind of data that you need to your external your new external hard drive. Remember the button in the back? The button will automatically start this program and then back up the necessary files that you choose. And keep in mind, you should back up your data on a regular basis just in case something fails. You can still retrieve your data from a backup. Well, I'm your host, Mr. Fixit. Thank you for watching.